This video will discuss how to purify red fluorescent protein by hydrophobic column chromatography technique. During the Amgen Biotech lab so far, you have already transformed E. coli bacterial cells with the recombinant P. era R. plasmid. When grown on auger plates, these cells produce pink colonies. If these transformed cells are cultured in liquid broth for several days, you will have millions of bacterial cells producing the red fluorescent protein as seen in this flask. As each bacterial cell produces about a thousand different proteins, how can the RFP be separated and purified from the bacterial proteins? We transfer the pink liquid from the culture flask into a centrifuge tube. After centrifugation, you see two layers. The top liquid is the broth, which should be discarded in a 10% bleach waste beaker. All of the bacterial cells are now in the bottom pink pellet. We now add lysis buffer to this pink pellet resuspend the cells, incubate, freeze, and thaw two times. This will help ensure that all of the bacterial cells will be lysed open and release all of the proteins. Centrifuge again, but notice that the top liquid supernatant is now pink and the pellet at the bottom is white. The pellet contains a cell debris. What you want to keep is the pink liquid, which should be a mixture of bacterial proteins and RFP. Transfer the pink liquid supernatant into a new microfiche tube and add binding buffer. This will be the protein mixture that you will separate by hydrophobic column chromatography so that you will end up with purified red fluorescent protein. Column chromatography is a general technique to separate a mixture of proteins based on their chemical content. There are many different types of, of chromatography used in biochemical and biotechnology labs, but we will focus on hydrophobic interaction chromatography technique to purify RFP. Most chromatography columns look like this diagram. There is a column that contains a buffer solution, a resin bed, and a stopcock valve. It is very important that you do not allow the resin bed to ever run dry. Use the stopcock valve to control the flow rate of the column. All proteins have both hydrophobic and hydrophilic amino acids, but RFP is considered a highly hydrophobic protein overall. This is the reason that hydrophobic interaction chromatography was chosen as a purification technique. Different types of proteins have different 3D shapes, and also different hydrophobic areas. The bottom four diagrams are a rough sketch to show that the, the blue hydrophobic areas can vary between proteins. The large blue circle here represents a chromatography resin bead. It has been coated with hydrophobic groups. Under high salt conditions, hydrophobic areas will interact with other hydrophobic areas. So, if hydrophobic areas on proteins are exposed, they will bind to the hydrophobic coating on these resin beads. After the column has been prepped and equilibrated, you will begin applying the protein sample and the binding buffer mix. This sample contains numerous bacterial proteins as well as the red fluorescent protein. If there are any proteins that are mainly hydrophilic, they will not bind to the resin beads and will pass through the column quickly. But if there are proteins that have exposed hydrophobic areas, these proteins will bind and stay on the resin beads. After the binding buffer has flowed through the column, we will next add a wash buffer, which has a medium salt concentration. If there are any proteins that are moderately hydrophobic, they will be released from the resin beads and flow down the column. That leaves only the most hydrophobic proteins to still be bound to the resin beads. We will then add the elution buffer, which has very low salt concentration. This condition causes the hydrophobic interactions to be interrupted, 
so that the hydrophobic proteins are now released from the resin beads and flow down the column. Red fluorescent protein will be one of these proteins and be easy to find due to its pink color. You will want to collect the pink liquid that comes down the column into a clear microfiche tube as that should be the purified red fluorescent protein. Your class may want to have a contest to see which group obtained the most or the purest RFP. You can check the results by looking at RFP with visible light, a blue light box, or a UV transilluminator. You can also use a spectrophotometer or a microplate reader. Here are some tips for this lab. Drip the liquid slowly down the wall of the column so that the resin bed is not disturbed. Do not allow the resin bed to dry out. Stop the liquid by turning the valve to a horizontal position when the liquid is just above the resin bed. When collecting RFP, place white paper behind the column for easier viewing. Thank you.